What's up everybody? Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Nice to see you again. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. And today you must find him because we are going to discuss about the most so-called dreaded destructive the worst house in the zodiac. It is the worst of the Dustanas. Yes, it is the 8th house. Some say it is the 12th house. Some say, no, 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 we think it's the 6th. All right. If you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And if you like this video, click the thumbs up at the end, of course. And if you want a consultation, then please approach me in my website below and share this video with everybody who wants to know how to deal with planets placed in the 8th house. Ashtambhav, as they call in Sanskrit, right? The most feared, terrorized house. My God, scandal, sexuality, depression, addiction. All these things are under the jurisdiction of the 8th house. Yes, we all know about the 8th house. But today's video is not on the 8th house. Today's video is on how to work regarding the planets that are placed in the 8th house. Yes. And here I am not going to give any specific 9 dictums. Oh my God. Sun is in the 8th. Then you should do this. Moon is in the 8th. Then you should do that. Venus is in the 8th. Then you should do that. No, no, no. no. This is in general about any planet in the 8th house. All right. And it is irrespective of any sign or irrespective of where the ruler of the 8th house is placed. Yes, the 8th lord can be placed anywhere, irrespective of that. And irrespective of the 8th lord being exalted or the planet in the 8th house being exalted or debilitated or conjunct or sitting alone. All right. Now, we know from the 1st house, the 8th house is very badly placed because the 8th house is 8th from the 1st house. Yes. Now, from the other houses it may not be very badly placed <laughs> oh yeah before i speak about this i must uh, speak on something regarding the eighth house there was a question somebody asked which is the house of scandals and which is the house of sexual obsession palashara has given both in one house itself yes and eighth house is also the house of pornography prostitution it is also the house of extramarital affair although Parashara says sixth house is this is the house of Sapatni Sapatni means the mistress the other other spouse yes but everything begins in the eighth house then it goes to divorce which is the house uh, number six yes without the eighth house the sixth house cannot function and that is why eighth house is also the house of scandal very surprising right <laughs> The same house, which is the house of sexual obsession, is also the house of scandals. So, what do we understand by this? Anyways, change the topic. <laughs> okay, so, 8th house deals with accidents, depression, because it is the original sign of Scorpio, where moon gets debilitated. Yes, moon, which represents Manas, our conception of this material realm, that goes into the 8th house. And gets debilitated because 8th house represents the sins of our past life. Should I repeat, 8th house represents the sins of our past lives. Any planet in the 8th house has the power to give us tears. Or any planet associated with the 8th lord has the power to give us tears. See, what's the difference between 6th house and 8th house? Sixth house represents those areas where you are frustrated. Sixth house is like, oh, I'm done with this. That's the sixth house. And then the eighth house is, that is the eighth house. So if planets are associated with the sixth house you will gain frustration in that yes now somebody will write in the comments oh you are wrong i have that planet there in the sixth house it's not giving me frustration my dear sir please see the whole horoscope all right but the planet in the eighth house will not give you frustration it gives you frustration to such a level that you cannot bear it which means what is the difference between frustration and tears 
when the frustration reaches to such an extent that you realize that you can't do anything about it then it goes to the matters of the eighth house that is what the eighth house is that is why it is the godfather of the sixth house <laughs> sixth house the house of burden okay anything in the sixth house will feel like a burden which you would feel if this thing was not there in my life i would be so happy but eighth house is the opposite eighth house you feel i wish this thing was there with me oh i wish moon in the eighth house people i wish there was mental stability in my life yes that's the eighth house and when you don't have that you are in tears all the time that is the eighth house because eighth house tells you the areas which you must pay back in this life yes those sins which you have performed they will come in the form of the planets placed there in the eighth house or wherever the eighth lord is sitting or whichever houses it is aspecting or whichever planets it is conjunct with okay i remember a song anyways i will not say it now <laughs> some other time <laughs> all right so now the first thing we should do is if we have any planet in the eighth house either it's one planet or no planets or we do not have any planet also but the eighth lord is sitting somewhere right the eighth lord will always always sit somewhere so irrespective of that you have a planet or you don't stop performing sinful activities because eighth house is the core house of sin papa and what is sin sin is nothing but basically disobedience to laws of god and now you may say oh i am a rebel i don't follow any laws of god no 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 you are not a rebel you are the eighth house which is the house of the scorpion scorpion people think scorpio is a very rebellious sign no they are foolish actually scorpio is the most controlled sign scorpio is the most helpless sign why yeah and now somebody will blast me in the comments oh you are saying wrong scorpio is not like that we are revolutionaries we are this we are that no i am not saying that you cannot be like that you may have other good planets placed but what i am saying is the sign of scorpio what how 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 do you see the scorpio scorpion is like that right so it has these two that i don't know what you call it fangs through which it catches you and then from the back it tucks it hits you that means scorpio or the eighth house represents those things which we have to pay back in this life which has caught us like this that is why we are crying always whenever it comes to the eighth house so the first thing that we must do is we have to stop performing sinful activities at least from now whatever we have done we have done we can't change it although i am going to speak about that also but we have to make sure that at least now we press the stop button tit red red button stop so now what will happen in the next life lifetimes when we are born then the situation of the eighth house will be much better okay because if we go on committing sins further especially the four regulative principles which the shrimad bhagavatam entitles all right and i am not talking of any other scripture here in the vedic context i am not talking of vedas puranas upanishads no i am talking of the highest of all the authorities that is the shrimad bhagavatam that is known as the crest jewel of all the books of all the scriptures that is known as the amalam puranam amalam puranam means the purest of all the puranas that is like shiromani that's like the crest jewel that's the best because vyasdev wrote the shrimad bhagavatam when he wrote all the other books and he was frustrated after that then narad muni came and said you have missed out something and then he wrote the shrimad bhagavatam which is an exclusive glorification of lord vishnu and his avatars and his interactions with his devotees that is what the shrimad bhagavatam is so in that there are these four regulative principles which are mentioned Bhagavatam says these are four regulative principles of freedom. <laughs> oh my god, how can regulation give us freedom, right? 
no no materialistic people cannot understand this if you tell them that these are regulative principles of freedom they will say that oh you are trying to restrict us right you are trying to bind us you are trying to hold us no these principles will liberate you because this will give peace to your mind which is the greatest asset mental peace i know so many beautiful people handsome hot sexy ladies <laughs> they don't have peace of mind my god billionaires millionaires no peace of mind everything is in ruins if you don't have peace of mind how can you enjoy so these four regulatory principles the first one is abstinence from meat yes because we are taking away the right from a living entity to live how would you feel if somebody would come and chop your head off nowadays there are so much discussions on sexual harassments yes in the hollywood so many women are go- coming out and saying oh we have been harassed this happened that happened everybody is concerned about what happens to humans to women what about the animals where have they gone <laughs> nobody is interested women are getting uh, sexually harassed everybody is concerned about women what to speak of women men are getting raped <laughs> forget sexual harassment for women nowadays the situation of the society is so bad that the uh, men are also in danger what the point is you be concerned about women but what about the animals why are you killing them why just because you get some pleasure when you eat if that is continued then the eighth house will tell us <laughs> the second is abstinence from intoxication intoxication includes all those na wine alcohol cigarette smoking ganja this that i don't know because i've never tested <laughs> i don't have much knowledge on them so i'm sorry i can't speak much on them because they will intoxicate your mind and they will degrade your consciousness just look at a person who smokes or who drinks how miserable their life is they are depressed they are suppressed they are stressed they are tormented oh my god yes then the third is gambling gambling and uh, doing all those na betting somewhere because that disturbs your mind you will cheat you will speak lies you will do whatever it takes to get money and the other one is the last one the most dangerous the house which eighth house is most famous for that's illicit sex which includes uh, sexual union with anybody before marriage or within marriage with somebody else and nowadays you see everybody is breaking these regulatory principles premarital sex is everywhere it's rampant that is why you look how miserable the society is that day one 13 year old boy he messaged me that oh that girl ditched me i can't live in this world this world is so bad i am committing suicide i said all the best <laughs> so when you uh indulge in all these activities from the age of 13 what can you expect sir all right so the first thing we should do is put a full stop to these four sinful activities and watching pornography discussing sensually about women about private parts of the opposite sex everything comes in that because one who is discussing he will watch pornography definitely it's not possible that you discuss about the opposite sex and then you don't uh, go and see yes so many girls i know my god so many boys <laughs> and then after some time you will uh, go and indulge with somebody physically yes and then there are all these things game of thrones in india there is big boss then so many words which they use that will instigate your mind sexually they will uh, you use uh, anyways change the topic <laughs> people are intelligent to understand what i am saying here that's the first thing to do to deal with planets in the eighth house at least press the full stop now don't commit further sins because that will give you tears all right what's the next thing that has to be done <clears throat> in the fifth canto of shrimad bhagavatam the character of rishabdev comes who is one of the shaktavesh avataras of vishnu 
Rishabdev tells to his most effulgent, most illustrious son, the great Bharat Maharaj, after whom India is named, Bharata. So he tells, Rishabdev tells to Bharat Maharaj that, Bharat Maharaj, my dear son Bharat, today I will tell you the shortcut, the secret, not secret, not shortcut, the maha secret, maha shortcut. To liberation, mukti, spiritual perfection, I will tell you today. And I will come to that, how it is related to the 8th house. I will explain it. Rishabdev tells to Bharat Maharaj, he says, Mahat sevanam api dwara vimukteshu. He says, Mahat sevanam means when we go and do service to the great souls. Mahat Sevanam Api Dwara Vimukteshu. It opens the door, the gateway to liberation because then God is extremely pleased that he or she is going and helping a person who is very close to me. Which means whenever we get a chance to serve an elevated personality, a spiritual personality, we should never, 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 never miss out on that. Now, Mahat Sevanam Dwar Vimukteshu. That means the eighth house, which is ninth, uh, which is twelfth from the ninth house. Yes, ninth house is the house of Guru of spiritual personalities. It's also the house of God and your father, but it primarily represents the gurus because we don't see God, we don't experience God right at this level. We only experience his representatives. Yes. And 12th house represents the feet. So feet of your guru is the 8th house. So the only remedy, the only person who can save you from the 8th house is your guru. Nobody else can save you. Because the 9th house is 2nd. So 2nd house pulls that house which is behind. That means whenever we get chance to serve spiritual personalities, to go and hear from them, the greatness of God, to go and hear from them and enlighten ourselves. It can be anywhere. It can be in US, somewhere in Vrindavan, somewhere in Mathura, somewhere in Hyderabad, somewhere in Rawalpindi, Pakistan, somewhere in Uganda, somewhere in Massachusetts, somewhere in London also, anywhere. Wherever we are getting chance to attend a spiritual program, go and take enlightenment from there, to go and listen to what they say and not only listen, Go and apply what they said. That is how we will benefit from that. And by that, we will be able to come out of the tormentation of the 8th house. Otherwise, the 8th house will not spare you. Yes, everybody is fear, having a lot of fear about this 8th house. But it's very simple. Just two things you have to do. Whenever you get a chance to meet some spiritual personality be very eager don't just go to the temple or to the mosque or to the church just because your father is telling if you are doing that it's not going to work <laughs> you are simply wasting your time by doing that at least maybe not completely because for that as in hindi they say uske bahane at least jate to hai <laughs> at least for that reason you are going Yes, but that is not going to benefit you. That should come from the heart. Yes, and then abstain from these four sinful habits. No meat eating, no gambling, no illicit sex, no intoxication. When you abstain from these sinful activities, these four, your mind will be peaceful. And then when you go to God, to the Gurus, to divine knowledge, to seek enlightenment, then you can hear Otherwise, you take a materialistic person to a uh, satsang program where a guru is giving a lecture. What will he or she go and say? Oh, it's very boring. I don't like to sit there because I want to see Game of Thrones, right? That means the level of depression this person is suffering from is so bad that when the guru is talking of some enlightening things, this person feels, oh, it's so boring. And then what this person does? This person goes into some illusion, fantasy. They will go and read Harry Potter. Yes, yes, yes. Why not Harry Potter? Yes. 
they will go and read harry potter oh there's a beautiful story na there's some fantasy la la land where some great illusions great magics are going on then they will go and watch this uh, game of thrones oh there are uh, people who are not cheating each other that day one of my friend was telling they are showing something anyways change the topic <laughs> then they will go and uh, sit with those friends who will go and discuss oh how how is uh, that girl looking today na which private part of her body is shown in this dress or in india there is this actress sunny leone she is very famous at least among my friends so uh, they were once discussing when i was with my friends that today which pa- which uh, cloth is sunny leone going to throw in throw out from her body in the next movie but then i was bit apprehensive <laughs> i won't tell the reason intelligent people will understand okay so if we are going and sitting with these people who are discussing about uh prostitute prostitution pornography sexuality yes and then we go and tell that oh spirituality doesn't work <laughs> mantras don't work recently one fellow told me that oh you told me to chant this mantra from 3 months i am chanting there's no result i said that can't happen mantras will only work when you stop doing the wrong activities because it's like a person who wants to reduce weight is going to the gym but is going on eating sugar can he reduce weight he can never reduce weight all right so that is it from my side how to deal with planets in the dustanas part 2 the eighth house two remedies abstain from all sinful activities and simultaneously cultivate spiritual wisdom try to go close to god and whenever you get get chance to associate with a spiritual personality never ever ever miss the chance then the level of sattva goodness inside you will increase and then god will forgive you for all the sins because lord krishna says in the bhagavad gita 17th chapter that whoever takes shelter of me i free them from all sins sarva dharman parityajya mame kam sharanam braja aham tvam sarva papebhyo mokshai shyami ma suchaha ma suchaha oh my dear arjuna do not fear one who has taken refuge unto me will obtain freedom from all sinful activities all right so remember god your guru is the god and your guru and all the spiritual personalities they are the only one who can save you from the eighth house all right and if you think that he will do all nonsense and then he will go and wear gemstone oh my moon is there in the eighth house maybe i should take a uh what they say this pearl maybe na oh no no but they will say that if moon is in the eighth you should not give pearl you should try to negate the negative effects of moon are are sir aap na ye gemstone le lijiye sab khatam ho jayega you can go on and on wearing a thousand million gemstones the eighth house is not going to spare you unless you do these two things and the moment you do these two things throw out all the gemstones pertaining to the eighth house <laughs> all right then you will realize that your life has improved so stop sinning again and focus on god by that even if people give you tears <laughs> you will understand that anyways this material world is a place of misery lord krishna says in the gita dukhalam ashashvatam now then you will understand that anyways this world is a place of misery so it's okay if somebody is giving me pain misery suffering because it's my karma only ultimately okay there you go that is it from my side if you have any questions queries or comments then please let me know in the comment section and if you want me to make any other video then also let me know and if you like this video click the thumbs up and if you have still not subscribed after seeing the video of the 6th house then i think now you will definitely subscribe okay and if you want a consultation then approach me in my website below and then you can directly ask me Oh my god I have four planets in the 8th house how do I deal with this <laughs> Oh my god I have Venus in the 8th house the spouse will only give me tears oh my god Govinda Govinda Srinivasa Govinda Venkatramana Govinda 
Govinda will only save you. Yes. Until next time. Wish you good luck with planets in the eighth house. <laughs> bye bye. See you.